So I tried filming this video a little bit ago, but I was really kind of sticking to a script and that wasn't working for me, so I'm going to try again. <laughs> Hi, my name is Olivia Brown and I am currently a third year undergraduate student at UCLA studying anthropology. And if you clicked on this video, then you would know that today I'm talking more specifically about biological anthropology. And I can't keep a smile off my face because biological anthropology is actually my niche or like my focus within anthropology. If you're unfamiliar with anthropology itself as a field, there's four main subgroups. There is biology, linguistics, culture, and archeology. span And people tend to focus on one of these subgroups. For me, that's biology, but for some of my friends, it's archeology, span linguistics, culture, you get the idea. Now, as much as I wanna say that it's black and white and you kind of pick one of those and you're set to go, it's not that simple. <laughs> anthropology is one of those fields where the moment you get answers to something, like 10 more questions open up. And because of that, the nature of the field is very much people and researchers and professionals are very, very specific in what they study. So how's all this connected back to biological anthropology? Let me tell you. I can't just say I'm a biological anthropologist. If someone were to ask me that and I said that, it wouldn't be a complete answer. Within this realm of biological anthropology, there's all these other things that you can study and that you can get into. I have a list here, so let me tell you some examples of that. You've got human paleontology, you've got evolutionary biology, you've got human genetics, you've got comparative anatomy, and the list goes on. There's all these different things that you can study because you can't be an expert in all of them. I can't be an expert in our primates and then also be an expert in molecular anthropology. But together, those are still making up the field that is biological anthropology. I hope that makes sense. So now that you get the idea, kind of, of what biological anthropology is in the sense that you can't just define it in a one and done thing, I'm going to give you a little preview of what I want to talk about for the rest of this video so you can decide if it's worth your time or if you should click out of this video. So today I'm going to share with you the definition that you're going to get if you just look up what is biological anthropology on the internet, and then I'm going to break that down for you. And finally, I want to put biological anthropology in the context of what you would get as a college student. So like I said before, I am a third year anthropology student at UCLA and I love talking about the classes that I've taken and just what anthropology does for me. So I'm going to tell you what you'd be learning if you decided to study biological anthropology in college. So now I'm going to start with the definition that you're going to get online. I'll read it to you real quick and then break it down. So biological anthropology, also known as physical anthropology, is a scientific discipline concerned with the biological and behavioral aspects of human beings, their extinct hominin ancestors, and related non-human primates, particularly from an evolutionary perspective. So within that like online definition, there's two big things that I think people should really keep their eyes open for. The first one being evolution. Biological anthropology really, really looks at how our behavior is dictated by our evolutionary history. And then of course there, I just said it, is behavior. And I think a lot of people think behavior is kind of like a fluffy subject often, like, oh, you can't predict human behavior, da 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 da. And I, I think there's some truth to that, but there's also within this field understanding how our behavior is rooted in our genetic information and our history. But I will get into that like a little bit later because it sounds a lot like nature nurture, you know what I'm saying? So I will talk about that. So at the core of this whole field is understanding human similarities and differences. And honestly, as I researched biological anthropology so I could explain it the best in this video, I kind of came to find that it's super focused on like variation in human beings. This is our morphology, this is our genetics, this is our behavior. And looking from person to person and how these different things can change and be different just depending on who you are, your history, yada, yada, yada. Then, like I literally just said, you have the whole nature nurture situation and this is deeply, deeply, deeply rooted in biological anthropology. This question continues to surface in so many different disciplines. That's to what extent does biology influence our behavior and to what extent does culture influence our behavior? I personally am of the belief they work together and we will never ever know how much one does over the other. However, people refuse to accept that answer. I'm okay with it, but biological anthropology really does look at the biology side of that. So how much is what we do and what we think rooted in our genetic information? Then lastly, I wanna tell you a little bit about the classes that you might be taking as a college student. So like I said at the very beginning, there's four different anthropology subgroups. Now, the way that looks like for college classes is you take a prerequisite uh, in each one of these subfields. After taking these prerequisites, you then have the opportunity to take upper division classes that are a lot more specific in that. So I would take a general biological anthropology class, 
my freshman year and then as I get older I had the opportunity to take more specific classes. So the anthropology class at my school for biological anthropology is called Anthropology 1 Human Evolution and I wrote down the little description here which is just evolutionary processes and evolutionary past of human species and that's literally it. It is super Sparknotes version of evolutionary biology and biological anthropology. Like this is barely scratching the surface. But in that class, I learned a lot about our primate ancestors and I learned a lot about just how evolution works on the biological level. And because I had that foundational knowledge, I was able to move forward into my upper divisions with a lot of ease. <laughs> I will say though, I do have a lot of like primate species and hominin ancestors just like floating around in my brain now that I feel like I have nowhere to put them. There's a lot of really basic foundational knowledge that you will get in that class. Then you get to take these really fun, really cool, really, really detailed upper division classes. Now, some of the ones that I've taken are molecular anthropology, evolutionary psychology, neuroscience for social science majors, Human sexual behavior, that's it. That was a cool class, let me tell you. And then some of the other classes that UCLA has to offer that I actually haven't taken in biological anthropology are evolutionary medicine, evolution of language, evolution of personality, paleopathology, and this is literally just the beginning. There's so many options that you can take and it's so exciting. If I wanted to try to hide my nerdiness, I wouldn't say what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. And technically, I actually finished the anthropology major this quarter. So I'm in my last class of anthropology right now. And yet, I was signing up for classes for next quarter, right? I should be doing my minor, I should be doing GEs. No. <laughs> I signed up for an extra class, an extra anthropology class called evolutionary medicine because I simply couldn't resist. I was like, you were just too interesting to pass up. So look forward to that in my video next quarter on the classes that I'm taking. But yeah, I'm obsessed with biological anthropology. Overall, I just wanna say that biological anthropology is such a blast. If you think evolution is interesting, if you think natural selection is interesting, if you are a Darwin fan, if you think monkeys are cool, then this very possibly could be the subject for you. Um, however, if maybe this isn't what grabs you at the very beginning, maybe cultural or linguistic or archaeology, maybe those are what's going to grab you. So I actually have a ton of other videos talking about each of these different areas. I have like a beginner's guide to cultural anthropology. I've talked about some of the different fields. I've got like a linguistic anthropology book recommendation. All these things, if they sound like they could apply to you, feel free to check them out. If not, I wish you the best of luck in finding a major or finding just a field of study or a job that really stands out to you. That's currently my mission. I am on the hunt for a job that I love and brings me joy in the future because I find that not a lot of people are doing that nowadays and I just, I refuse to accept that. So, wow, that was, that was really a tangent. All of this is to say, I hope you are staying safe during this global pandemic. You know what to do and I will see everyone next Sunday. Okay, bye.